Greetings, visitor. This is Snake from Snakebite Studios. I thought it was about time that I did a video tutorial for my cursor luck program. So let's just jump right into this. At snakebitestudios.com, find cursor lock. Go to the Downloads tab and download the latest version. Run the installer. It's a simple install process with a few typical options that you might want to change. When it's finished, cursor lock will run automatically. Let's look at the cursor lock interface a little bit so we can get an overview of what some of the options are. Most of the time you'll be using the shortcut tab to create a shortcut to your program that uses cursor lock. In the other tabs you'll find options for hotkeys. I'll just change some of these now. Default settings that change how cursor lock always functions, like disabling the default log. And in the About tab, you'll find the version info and a few links, including the help documentation. For anything not covered in this tutorial, please check the documentation. For anything not covered in the documentation or tooltips, feel free to email me. I don't mind taking a few support or feature requests. Let's go back to the shortcut tab. There are four different shortcut modes that you can use. Program shortcuts are the most straightforward. You are in cursor lock when needed for a certain program. The two user modes are for people that want cursor lock always open, so they control the locking manually using hotkeys. An unlock mode is just for emergencies. You'll probably never need it. Since most people are going to use program mode, we'll look at that in more detail. The options for program mode are separated into two groups. One for program options, like the path to the executable and program arguments. The other is for standard options, which override the options in the default tab. Let's look at an example use of cursor lock. Obviously, most people use it to fix video games on multi-monitor systems, so we'll look at Grand Theft Auto 3 as our example. Quite quickly, it becomes obvious that the mouse cursor has drifted out of the primary monitor, and if I click to attack a hobo or whatever, it will have the unwanted result of minimizing the game. Fixing a game like GTA 3 is really simple with cursor lock. You just check the box for open program and then find the executable for the game. Click Create Shortcut to make a permanent shortcut to the game with cursor lock applied. Run that shortcut. GTA 3 is now playable again. Oh, 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 oh. 
Some games are a bit more difficult to set up because they use a launcher program. Steam works in this way. Let's look at a Steam game which lacks multi-monitor support, The Witcher. As you can see, it's hard to pan the camera, because the mouse can go past the edge of the screen. And you still have the hazard of clicking outside the game window. Now back to cursor lock. As I said, this game uses the launcher program Steam, so there are a few more steps to take to get it to open right, and then lock the cursor right. First, go to Open Program and find your Steam executable. It's usually under C, Program Files, Valve, Steam. Now check the lock program box and find your main game executable. In this case, Witcher.x. Steam games are usually under Steam apps common from the Steam directory. If you can't find it, you can open Task Manager on your secondary monitor to find the executable name and then do a search for that. The last thing we have to do is find the app ID of the game in question. There are a few ways to do this, but the most simple is to select your game in Steam, and then use the link to visit the store page. In the URL bar, the five digit number at the end of the URL is the app ID. Copy it. Go back to cursor lock and type in the program args dash app launch space and then paste the app ID. Create the shortcut and enjoy. <laughs> 